Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this harvest themed tea service today, the 27th of September. It's lovely to be with you. I'm sorry we're not together properly in Rogers Hall, um, but I hope you feel a sense of fellowship and community, even if you're watching at home. Maybe next time, maybe next time we'll be able to gather, but um, but watch this space. We'll let you know as soon as we can about meeting together next time in Rogers Hall. In the meantime, if you're able, do go down to St John's if you've not already and have a look at the church down there. It's looking beautiful. Thanks to all those who've contributed to decorating it for this harvest season. And thank you too for all who've contributed a donation, either food for the food bank in rugby or money towards the support of our mission partners, Byom Jin and Marie. I know that um, they'll be very grateful for all our donations at this time. Um, so we're going to have a fairly traditional tea service this afternoon with a harvest theme. Uh, we're going to have a first hymn very, very soon, All Creatures of Our God and King. Um, and then we'll have a short time of prayer before another harvest hymn, a Bible reading, uh, a talk by Paul this afternoon. And um, then we will lead into some prayer before finishing with a final wonderful hymn of faithfulness. So let's now sing our first hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. Oh, praise him, oh, praise 
praise Him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And all ye men of tender hearts, forgiving others, take your part. lead us in a time of confession as we come into God's presence. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we've used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest but sometimes forget that you've given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are sometimes thoughtless, and do not care enough for the world you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We sometimes store up goods for ourselves as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Amen short time of silence as we remember perhaps our own weaknesses and failings at this time. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now enjoy singing a real harvest hymn, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Love 
fields and scatter the good seed on the land. But it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. He sends the snow in winter, the warmth to swirl the grain, the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain. Around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord For all His love He only is the maker Of all things near and far He paints the wayside flower Lights the evening star. The winds and waves obey him. By him the birds are fed. Much more to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord. Around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord For all His love All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord For all His love Reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go. Show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, and praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hello. Our reading today starts by telling us just where Jesus was. He's traveling from Galilee towards Jerusalem, and he's on the border between Samaria and Galilee. Now there's enmity between these two places. The Samaritans and the Jews don't get on at all. Um, you're neither here nor there. I feel a bit like that today. Here at home, I'm safe. When I go out and expose myself to the COVID-19 that's filling rugby at the moment, I feel unsafe. I'm neither here nor there. And as he's going along, he, he's going past a village. And there are 10 men there who've got leprosy. Now, leprosy was a, a horrible disease. It infected your skin. Um, it would turn into sores. You lost all sense of feeling, which meant that when you cut yourself or hurt yourself, you didn't realise you had. And that would then lead to more and more problems. They were quite recognisable, these people who had leprosy. It started with white skin. Um, that's a bit different to today with COVID, isn't it? Um, no one is recognisable there. But because it was recognisable, they were enforced to do social distancing. They weren't allowed to approach within people who were well. Um, and because of that distancing, because they couldn't be close to other people, in this story, they call out to Jesus in a loud voice. Leprosy would make this even more difficult for them because one of the uh, results of leprosy was um, only being able to whisper. You've got a hoarse voice. So they're segregated. And the next thing is, they're going to be mixed race. We're on the border between Galilee and Samaria. And presumably some people, uh, knowing that there was a sort of leper colony on the border, from both sides, that's where you would go to separate yourself for company. And of course, because they were, um, they'd got leprosy, they were barred from the temple. When I say barred from the temple, that means the one place that they can go to worship is barred to them. This is real segregation. We're looking, we can open our church. But for these lepers, that wasn't a choice. And they call out to Jesus and they call him master. In Greek, the word is epistata. And it actually means chief commander. It's not like the normal Kyrie word, Lord. It means master, chief commander. Because you see, these lepers must have heard about Jesus. They must have known who he was and what he could do. And they call out. But they don't call out healers. They call out, Master, have pity on us. And then Jesus, verse 14 tells us, when he saw them, not when he heard them, but when he saw them. Now we know that Jesus often approached people, touched them, healed them. But he didn't do that this time. He didn't approach them. He just said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now that's what Moses um, told the Jewish nation to do for leprosy. You had to go to the priests, show them that you were clean, and they would then allow you back into society. And Jesus said, he didn't say your sins are forgiven. He didn't say you are healed. He just said, go show yourself to the priests. Now remember, these lepers were banned from the temple. They were banned from all contact. And they're told, go and show yourself to the priests. And they knew that if they went towards the priests with leprosy, they would be stopped. They would be turned away because they weren't allowed to approach people. So it's a very brave thing to do, isn't it? To start out with leprosy, 
to go towards the very people who would ban you from being in their presence. But it was even worse for one of these, uh, one of these people, because he was a Samaritan. And Samaritans, not being Jews, weren't allowed in the temple at all. There was an inscription above the temple gate that said, uh, all foreigners, halogenes, that enter here will die immediately. This Samaritan, this man with the ten, told by Jesus to go and show himself to the priests, must have thought, but I'm not allowed in there. What can I do? Now, faith is a strange thing. There's a little story about uh, a man who was on a, a hillside watching a boy fly a kite. And the kite was so high in the sky that you really couldn't see it. And the man looks up and he can't see this kite. And he turns to the boy and he says, what are you doing? And the boy says, I'm flying my kite. But how can you know? You can't see it. And the boy said, no, but I can feel the tug on the rope. Wow, that's faith, isn't it? You can't see it, but you can feel a tug. That's what faith means to us. We not, may, may not be able to see Jesus face to face, but that little tug on our heartstrings tells that he is there. So, in faith, we do what we're told to do. Do you remember in school, that business that you say, do what I say, not what I do? Well, with Jesus, it's quite different. He does what he wants us to do, and we do what he tells us to do. So don't think, what if, or maybe, or I can't because. No more excuses. Just do it. So when these lepers set out, set out to Jerusalem in obedience to Jesus, just imagine, I can't, it is impossible to imagine. They're walking towards Jerusalem and then they look at each other. One of them will have grasped across and you'll see that his friend's skin is healing. The white patches are going. And he looks down at his hands and they're healing as well. This is a miracle. They must have been singing and shouting for joy. And all this because they obeyed. But when they were healed, only one of them came back to Jesus to say thank you. The ten of them should be leaping about, leaping for joy. They should have formed an impromptu choir and sung Psalm 103 together. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. That's what they should have been doing. But only one of them came back to Jesus. Cured. When he met him the first time, because he had leprosy, he couldn't go close to Jesus. Now he can come closer to Jesus. He can come closer to him and thank him. When we're praying, we often ask, we're asking for Jesus to do things. Perhaps we should a bit, put a bit more into our prayers of thanking Jesus for all the things that he has done for us. You may have heard the story of the man who was betrayed by a friend. He went to his friend and he said to him, how could you do this to me? Who picked you up out of the gutter? Who gave you your first job? Who lent you money and bailed you out of jail? The reply was, you did, that's true. But what have you done for me lately? Well, Jesus does something for us every day. Every day, Jesus is 
blessing us with his wonderful grace. In this last verse, it says, your faith has made you well. That word in Greek, made you well, is so so ken. And it could be saved or made whole. And that's what happened to the Samaritan. So, as we go in the rest of our week, let's remember every day, every day, just what Jesus does for us. And let's say thank you to him all the time. Amen. To now lead us in some more prayer so please do join me in these prayers they follow the Lord's Prayer so this will be a kind of combination of our prayers and our saying of the Lord's Prayer so let us pray for our own needs and for the needs of others following the pattern which Jesus gave when he taught us to pray to God our Father. Through our love of the countryside, through our care of animals, through our respect for property and tools, Father, 
hallowed be your name. On our farms and in our homes, in our colleges and in schools, where machinery is made and where policy is planned, Father, your kingdom come. By our seeking your guidance, by our keeping your commandments, by our living true to our conscience, Father, your will be done. For the millions who live in poverty and hunger, for our own needs and the requirements of our neighbours, by cooperation, sympathy and generosity, give us today our daily bread. Because we have broken your commandments, doing what we ought not to do and neglecting what we ought to do, forgive us our sins. If any have injured us by injustice, double dealing or exploitation, we forgive those who sin against us. When prosperity lulls us to false security or hard times prompt us to despair, when success makes us boastful or failure makes us bitter, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. In the assurance of faith, in the confidence of hope, in the will to serve, help us to love Christ as Lord and our neighbour as ourselves. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And just uh, another time of silent prayer as we bring before God any and all those we know who need God's healing love at this time. Amen. Now we're going to sing a wonderful hymn, one of my all-time favourites. Great is thy faithfulness. Please do join in where you are and enjoy singing this wonderful hymn.
And now, I hope you've all enjoyed being with us this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed the good old Harvest hymns. I hope you've felt a sense of gratitude for all of God's generous love and provision for us. And now let me say a final prayer for us before perhaps we all join in saying the grace together where we are at home. God the Father, who created the world give you grace to be wise stewards of his creation. God the Son, who redeemed the world, inspire you to go out as labourers into his harvest. God the Holy Spirit, whose breath fills the whole of creation, help you to bear his fruits of love, joy and peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Peace be with you.